Well, it's been a minute, and Batman the Cape Crusader has been out for a week, and everyone is loving it. Hey everyone, I'm James. Welcome to Digital Shark Cootery. If you're new here, hit subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give it a double thumbs up. That's what we could use. All right, let's talk right. Let's talk right into it. Let's talk right about Batman the Caped Crusader from producer JJ Abrams, Matt Reeves, and of course, everyone's favorite Bruce Tim, who did the 90s Batman. This was you know, this was announced a few years ago or whatever. And I think it went from uh, Max to Amazon Prime, and now here it is. And it's been out for a week. There's been a lot of discussions about it on the social media. Uh, if you've been on this channel, you've seen our own uh, Rob McDonald has done little shorts on on the episodes and two episode spurts, I believe. I think the first few are individual, and then he goes goes on little spurts. And this, so, so I walked into this not knowing what to expect. I was like, okay, let's see if it's any good. Uh, I was a big fan of what they ended up doing with X Men '97. I thought that was a fantastic show. I love the Batman. I've loved every Batman movie, so it's hard for me to, you know, to you know. I I have like genuinely, I've enjoyed every single one of them, even uh, Mister Freeze and Batman and Robin. I love that movie. I don't care what anyone says. So I walked into this one not knowing what to expect, loving the, the Batman the animated series, and like every. In every version of Batman that we've gotten, I've been a fan of. I was Batman as a child for Halloween. Shocker. Uh, but look, I am old. Uh, and, and so I had some thoughts. I said, let's look at this. And I thought it was it was an interesting choice to place this in in uh, 19, the 1940s. I thought that was a – it was a choice, especially with the decisions they wanted to make with, um, you know – the surroundings and a lot look the ethnicities are one thing i don't think anybody of these ethnicities uh would have the would carry the positions they have in 1940 but then you you know you just kind of you separate that and you say okay well this is i mean it's batman so you say okay this is fiction and it's like a, a separate timeline all together and you don't worry about it cuz i have to say i thought uh, Commissioner Gordon, Barbara Gordon, I actually really enjoyed their dynamic. I enjoyed those two together. And I thought as the show progressed, they they were getting stronger. Uh, there is that episode that, that heavily features uh, Gordon wanting to, So spoilers if you haven't seen the show. I'm going to go straight spoilers here. But obviously um, there's an episode where Gordon, they're trying to assassinate Gordon and trying to figure that out. Uh, and that I thought that was one of the weaker points of the show of the series. Uh, when we got, to, I don't know, I don't know what it was about it. It just I didn't feel it felt a little off putting to me. I was like, okay, but after that, it felt like Gordon and Barbara Gordon, the two Gordons, got stronger for me, and I liked where they ended up in the final episode. One criticism I hear about this show quite often is that Batman takes a a. Uh, He's a side character in it. Nobody knows if he's the main character or not. And and watching it, I I really really liked the way they utilized Batman in the series. He kind like, he's not totally at the forefront. It's not a Batman story. It's a Gotham City story, and Batman's a part of Gotham City, and he enters it when need be. Uh, and I I enjoyed when he entered it. Uh, I mean, it's not perfect. I think, you know, sometimes it might have been nice to see him a little bit more. But I think we saw him just enough where you're like, I want more uh, Batman. I listened to an interview earlier today on Fandango, but with the Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice cast. And, uh, you know, in the first Beetlejuice, Michael Keaton, Batman, he's not in that movie a lot. And, and in that interview, he mentions, you know, if they're going to do a sequel, maybe he'll be in it five minutes more or maybe less. He doesn't want the movie to just be Beetlejuice because Beetlejuice isn't in that movie that much. And I think... You know, we forget that. I think in your when you're when you're sucked into a good story, those characters they're not as prominent as you remember them being. And I know a lot of people are critiquing it, but we live in the age of 
mic of looking at everything in a microscope, critiquing every little detail that we want. And yes, there is a lesbian kiss in it, and there's strong women in this, and there's a lot of things that could take a lot of people off and throw and take you out of it because this is 1940. So it would take you out of it if you're looking at it for what it actually is. But at the same time, it's, I, I really thought that. That, that as the story went on, I was I was really invested in the happenings of Gotham City and in this like and in this bubble of of the era. And I do look at this as kind of an Elseworlds type story, which for whatever the hell that means, I don't know. It was nice seeing 1940s Max Fleischer, Lois Lane. The Fle the Fleischer Superman cartoons are the ones I grew up with. I had a VHS tape. It's a it's a VHS tape is what we watch movies and TV shows and whatnot on. And it was not really TV shows, but it was in the eighties. Uh, and I loved it. I watched it all the time. If you remember in that Superman, he didn't, there was no mom, Pa Kent. He was an orphan, I believe. And you can only leap over top. But there wasn't, anyway, it was fantastic. Also Popeye and, and Bluto or Brutus, whatever that his name was when he pretends to be Superman. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so there was things about this that I actually liked. I liked the way the story progressed. Now it starts off with the penguin and they, they gender swapped the penguin. And I thought starting it that way was definitely a mistake. I also thought like that episode is actually not a bad episode. It's just, they took the penguin. They kind of made the penguin uh, the same character, but also a little bit different. I'm wondering if the gender swap was simply because of the Colin Farrell show coming out. They they want to disassociate with that because I don't know why. Uh, I, you know, the, the thing with that character is it kind of worked with that aspect of of the show and, and within Gotham. They, but they could have even done something cooler, and that would be to create a new character. Because if you remember, Harley Quinn didn't exist until the animated series. So I, you know, I think this character could have been a, a new character. They, may, you know, I. I like the way, because it, it's not really the penguin, but it's the penguin, but it's not the penguin. There's aspects of it that's penguin, but not really. And and so I think, you know, if they would have made this character a brand new, unique character, I think she would have been stronger and wouldn't have had the baggage of the gender swapping and being the penguin. She could have been her own thing. They could have started it all from scratch, had her own little gimmicks, because she has two sons. One, she brutally murders, which, well, not, I mean, yeah, I guess it's actually a freaky way to die which was cool and that kind of sets the tone of okay this is you know when it started i want one of the episodes i watched on amazon prime it said uh 13 plus or something and, and i because the whole time I'm watching i'm like who is this for i don't know who this is for and then when she kills her kid i'm like okay this is a little bit more for grown-ups than the animated series was but that character i think could have been a, a brand new unique character and and it, and 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 she she wasn't. They decided to go with the penguin. And I really liked the way that they started it, though. What I because and like you, the way they utilize, and it, it basically Batman saw is Batman's new to the scene, which is a tie. I'm getting tired now of Batman being new to the scene. Let's just have Batman. Batman can just be Batman. Doesn't need to be new to the scene anymore. I'm good. We're good. We've had old bat. We've had young Batman. We I'm, I'm good. Let's anyway. He's new to the scene. And he solves the penguin crime and puts penguin away and then realizes, oh, now that I put penguin away, the other mob bosses that now, you know, I've just kind of like got, I've let Gotham run amok. And that kind of sets in motion the events of the series. And I really, I, I quite in, enjoyed that. I also really enjoyed Harley Quinn. I thought the, 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 the alternate take on Harley Quinn being, a shrink and never kind of relinquishing that and having like a double-sided like actual how supervillains used to be kind of persona to her. I really enjoy that. Doesn't need the Joker. Doesn't use the Joker. There is no Joker. Well, there is, but there's no Joker in the series for the most part. I really kind of like the way they did Harley Quinn. I was like, all right, this is interesting. And and I don't I don't know if I would say I prefer it to original Harley Quinn. I don't know if I don't prefer it. Like I, I was indifferent. I was kind of like okay, because uh, at that point I was. I was kind of along for the ride with the character, and I liked the way they brought Harley Quinn in, and she was Bruce's shrink, and and they had all that, and 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 I thought it worked, and I thought like because there was her that character and and Harvey Dent were the two villains that are in the entire until well she's in it they're in the entire series basically, and I, and I really liked the way that they utilized 
uh, her. And I liked Harvey Dent. I like the way they utilized Har Harvey Dent. I like the way they changed Harvey Dent. I, I it just it felt like you know they were trying. I don't know if it worked or not. I think it did for me in the context of this show. I don't think I'd always want Harvey Dent to be this way, but I like the way they changed him up. I like the way that his face was a little bit more rotten than like you know decomposed and just colorful and like you know whatever i like the way it looked like it looked like almost like clayface who i think was probably the strongest villain in the show was clayface i thought they did a phenomenal job i actually thought when they were um like two years ago when the batman came out and there was rumors that clayface would be in the batman too that's kind of how i fi uh, figured clayface would be done minus the well, yeah, that's actually how I thought Clayface would be done. That's how he was done in this. So I, I thought that was thrilling. I thought he was great in that. Again, it progresses the story along. And one thing I really liked about this, because if you watch me on Rebel Scum Podcast, the one thing I have a problem on, on that podcast is these Star Wars shows on Disney Plus, they just they feel like one long episode, one long movie chopped up into pieces. And this, while it had a through line throughout, Every episode was an individual episode, so I could stop it when I wanted to stop it, sorry when I wanted to stop it. Didn't feel like I was missing anything. Obviously, the, the episodes nine and ten uh, were connected. They're kind of a two-parter in a lot of ways, um, and I actually I I thought it was great. I thought it was a good ending to to the season because we're with Harvey Dent from day one. We're with Harvey Dent. He wants to be the mayor, and then he he's losing in the polls, and the mob comes up to him and says, "Hey." you know, we can help you. And then he says no, and then he agrees, and then he kind of turns his back on them, and then he gets the acid. And they changed it, but they kept it They kept it uh, somewhat true. Obviously, like, the acid is still there, so I didn't deviate too much from that. But when he is, Harvey Dent is more of a Jekyll and Hyde. And, and if you notice, they swapped the rod inside of his face to the right, and the clean face is on the left now. And actually, the, the left, the clean side is actually more of the demonic side, and the, and the, the acid side is is kind of his gentler self and he has some anger issues throughout the the series too so you kind of see the the super villain in him coming out i thought they could have done a better job uh there was a few things that caught my mind him and bruce wayne being friends i know that there's an episode where like i think it might be the second last episode or but it was later on i thought maybe we could have seen them earlier on as, as being friends and there's a few things where they just kind of shoehorn things in just to get the plot going and and to make it work and i always find that a little a little lazy not a big fan like how are you supposed to know that's a that's a thing why is that a thing uh things like that that happen and, and but you know little, little things i love seeing gentleman ghost i thought that was a fun addition to it you don't see a lot of gentlemen ghosts in anything anymore i thought that was from a big hawkman fan i thought that was a lot of fun seeing gentleman ghost show up and a, a clay face like i said was a standout also there's a lot of little tidbits here and there i like seeing harvey bullock being uh corrupt in it as well and flask with him I thought they were. I thought that was a good dynamic. I love that they kind of got their comeuppance at the end uh, with Batman. I love that Batman still disappears. I love that he's always watching from the shadows, like Batman should be. There's a lot of really good things about this series. So why? And if you go on Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a 97% critic score and a 55% average audience score. And I'm wondering what that is. And obviously, there is a lot of the people complaining about the. the EI stuff, the you know, as JW or whatever, all these things, the inclusion aspects of it. And like I said, I think it's it's you know, some of it I think works, some of it not so much. I've seen people critique that, you know, um a lot of the male characters are dumb. I, maybe that's true. I didn't really notice. I like I just I like the dynamic of Bruce Wayne and Alfred as well. It was it was different. One of my I love the Batman, but one of the weaknesses I had for me in that movie was the the relationship with Bruce Wayne and Alfred. I didn't think Alfred was in it enough either. I think that was part of the problem. But I kind of like this one where he uses his Batman persona around him and he refers to him as Pennyworth, almost like he, like they're not family like we're used to. And at the end of the season, he calls him Alfred for the first time. And I really kind of enjoyed that and I dug it. I thought that was fun. I thought there was a neat little twist on their relationship also. And, Al and, and Alfred goes along with it. Alfred, of course, does get possessed by Gentleman Ghost, and then they have their little moment. And you see that Alfred does care for 
for Bruce more than just him being Batman because throughout that you don't really get that relationship. There's not like I think the the, the complaint from a lot of people is there's not a lot of Bruce Wayne in it. I don't think they realize that there's there's Batman in it, but there's not a lot of Bruce Wayne. But I think that works for this show. I don't think we need to follow Bruce Wayne. I think you know the actors that have played Bruce Wayne, like Michael Keaton. I think they all kind of suggest that Bruce Wayne is kind of a little boring. Uh, Batman is the real character. Bruce Wayne is the alter ego. And that's really what this show kind of does. And you see that a lot with the the Harley Quinn when he's in therapy with Harley Quinn. And Harley Quinn is just like, I guess you're exactly what you say you are because he's so good at those lies and giving off that persona that there's no, he has no backstory, right? Like Bruce Wayne's backstory, obviously his parents, but there's not, there's no more to Bruce Wayne than that. And I, I kind of liked how they, they pulled that off in this as well. I thought Barbara Gordon was actually great. She was kind of, our eyes through it. I, I mean, I guess at some point you could say, I wish that was more commissioner Gordon, James Gordon, Jimmy Gordon, you know, you're kind of like, but, but I thought it worked well with Barbara Gordon because she's an attorney and, and just the character that she has. And then that added to the dynamic of with her father. And I think, I think it really, I, I personally, I kind of thought that that worked. I thought let's, you know, I was, like I said, I was along for the ride. Uh, the first episode, I was a little, eh, and then as I went, I'm like, came along for the ride. They do the Robin thing where they're like, there's going to be no sidekicks. I think here's, I think the reason for the low score is you have to buy into what they're giving you. And if you don't buy into it early, then it's just going to lose you and it's going to spiral out. And because it, it just keeps going down the direction it goes. And I'm not talking about like the political stuff. I'm not going to, I don't like, I don't really care for that stuff, but like, so you go down it. And, and if you buy into what they're giving you, you can enjoy it, which ultimately I did. It wasn't my favorite. It's not as good as the animated series, obviously. It's not as good as, um, like, Mask of the Phantasm is my favorite. I think that's my favorite Batman movie. Uh, but but So it's not as good as that. But I, I don't know if I expected it to, and I don't think I need to compare it to it either. I just, I'll watch it as its own separate thing. Now, it ends with a cliffhanger, uh, not a cliffhanger, with a suggestion of season two and what season two could be, or... Or it's a nice just little tease like, hey, this is going to keep going. Uh, because I, I think as a one-off, this show, like as a as a as its own thing, this show works, in my opinion, like as a one-off. If they keep going for season, 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 it might get long in the tooth. And I might be in the 55% versus the 97% who think this is positive. I might get that way because it might get it might get a little long because it, it, I like the way they did it. I like the way they, they changed the stories. They do it in comics all the time. I just I like the way... They, they kind of took a step back and said, what can we do to change things up to make it fresh? And they did it. And if you didn't like it, that's fine. If you like it, that's fine. That's all, It's all subjective. Uh, but if there is a season two, it's leading into the Joker. The Joker's coming in. This is this looks like a, I'm kind, I kind of wish they, they did an episode with this Joker character in this season because this looks like um, the Andrew Fantasia on the channel is not a huge fan of the Joker. And this looks like a Joker that he might get. I mean, I'm putting words in. I, have, I don't know if you've seen this episode, Ethan. But this Joker doesn't seem to laugh. He's got a very deep voice. We only hear for like half a second. But you see all these dead bodies with giant smiles and one guy laughing his buttocks off. And then he goes, perfect, or whatever he says. <laughs> he doesn't sound like that. But whatever he says, is like, perfect. And then he's got a needle in his hand. And so he is clearly like a serial killer who wants to inject people with like laughing medicine laughing gas whatever stuff like that so it's a different take on a villain once again which this show is doing and trying to do and i think for the most part successful not not necessarily all the time but i'm curious to see what they do with the joker so i would be on board probably for one more season like i said if it keeps going it might get a little tiring for me personally uh but i think i i ended up enjoying the season more and the way i know i enjoyed it is because i watched it there's so many shows I just stopped watching part way through if I don't enjoy it. I didn't. I, I don't think I liked it as much as I definitely didn't like it as much as X Men '97. Don't think it was as strong as that, but that also had more episodes. And it was. And the difference is, I know when they came up with this, they they went to Bruce Tim and they said, "Hey, do you want to bring back the animated series?" He said, "No, let's do something a little more adulty or whatever." Whereas X Men '97 is a straight continuation of a show that I grew up on. So it's you know it's hard to compare those two even, but I definitely ended up enjoying this significantly more than i thought again though the first episode i was like yeah the second episode with clayface kind of won me over and then i guess i was just in a good mood and i and i i got on board with the gotham that they were 
that they had. Maybe it should have been called something else if you didn't think Batman was in it enough. I know this video is going to get a lot of hate. I'm definitely okay with it uh, because at the end of the day, I ended up enjoying it. Will I watch it again? We'll have to stay. You'll have to stay tuned. Same bad time, same bad channel to find out because I'm not quite sure. Voice acting. I thought the voice acting in this series uh, was terrific. The new Batman voice, spectacular. Bullock was great. Catwoman was Christina Ricci. She was phenomenal. She's only in one episode, and I really I liked the, the little things they did with Catwoman. I thought Catwoman was great. Um, I, I do one thing I did like was that they didn't come back. I was kind of happy that the villains didn't come back. If it was a longer season, then you can you can do that. But I, I really kind of like that they didn't. If there's a second season, maybe we'll see more Catwoman. We'll see more Penguin. We'll see more. Uh, of the other characters that show up and, and hopefully a bunch of new ones like the Joker and, and we'll see what else they have up their sleeve. I loved before I leave, I gotta say the, in the one episode, the Harley Quinn episode, I did. I loved the reference to the night to the, my old Adam West show uh, with King Tut. I, I was giddy about King Tut right off the bat. And then of course the old Joker reference as well. There's a lot of little knots to this. He has a phone again. I wish he was red. I wish that phone was red, but it wasn't. There's a, little, a bunch of little nods to the old show. That's the show. That was my show as a, as a kid. I watched that. Uh, I think it was on daily. I watched it on syndication, obviously. I think it was on daily. And I watched it all the time at Adam West, man. He is my Batman. All right. That's it. Let me know what you guys thought of Batman Cape Crusader in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? 55%, 97%. I, I, I would say for me, if I gave this a something out of 10, it would probably be like a 7.5 out of 10. I think that's fair. Maybe maybe inching towards an 8. I might watch it again. I probably won't. But I did. not I enjoyed it more than I thought I would after that first episode. I absolutely did. Um, but we'll see what happens in the future if we get season 2 or if this is 8. Until then, we got the Batman 2 to look forward to. And whatever James Gunn's doing with Batman, we'll find out at some point. It's not going to be today. Maybe it'll be tomorrow. No idea. Thank you guys for watching. Like, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.